Hello, everyone. Welcome to another edition of Unscripted Access. I'm your host, Bronson Fiore, joined by the ever awesome Anthony Ta. Hi, guys. Weed pollen's and really high in the city today, so I'm sorry if I sound a little congested. All right. That is the allergen filled Anthony Ta. Yes. <laughs> And rounding out the microphone with me, the intern 001 has a barcode on the back of his neck, Ray Ray Johannesson. Greetings all. Whoa, whoa, you gotta be careful when you point out the barcode because for all we know, he could be the hitman here. That's true. Yeah, that's true. Number 001, I'm the best around. <laughs> he was Agent 47, <laughs> though. The, the best one around was uh... Agent 001. Yep. So Zero is better than me, but we don't talk about him. Speaking of which, the uh, Hitman movie is happening. Let's go. Yeah, Hitman yeah, Agent 47, that, that's going to be a movie. I remember I saw Hitman, the movie, what was it, the movie of that 2000s? As yeah, a video yeah. game movie based on Hitman, it kind of sucked, but as an action movie on its own, I thought it was okay. Yeah, yeah. like that new, that new Hitman action movie looks legit. So I'm I'm gonna probably check it out eventually. But first, it I want to. It looks s- like it has a budget and doesn't look like some terrible cheesy attempt of fan service. Mm-hmm. But but first, I want to see the straight out of Compton. Uh, or as Canadians call it, the NWA. That was that was bad. That was real bad. You still smile, Matt. Though. Did, Anthony, do you know what uh, straight out of Compton is? Oh yeah, I have a basic gist of it. Everyone's been yeah. talking about it. Yeah, it's it's about that rap group NWA. So that's why that joke works. Eazy-E and Dr. Dre. Yep, and all those guys would go on. I'm straight from the underground. (laughs) Rolling them streets. Out of of all these straight out of things that I've seen so far, I think my favorite one so far is straight out of shape. (laughs) That one was good. (laughs) I liked that one. Uh, one I liked. Straight out of jail with El Chapo and showing a tunnel. Straight out of money. That one was good. Straight that out of gas. Was, yep. That one was equally good, too. All those were pretty great. So what have you guys been up to? Anthony, what have you been up to? What I've been up to? Hey, I finally watched the first two episodes of Sword Art Online because the first season is on Netflix. Hell yes. Yeah. What would you think nice. of that? It, uh, it's pretty good so far. Yeah, that show has a lot of issues, but for whatever reason, I still like it a yeah, lot. Yeah, like, there's a lot of things I can point out wrong with that show, but I love that show. Like, Kirito's a total Mary Sue, and, like, like if you play MMOs, there's gonna be a lot of discrepancies, but... Against soloing. Yeah, thing. which is bleeping impossible if you Physically play those games. impossible. <laughs> but, whatever. Well, he's a beater, I mean. He knows. He knows the no. Anthony plays MMOs. But that's for another podcast. Yeah. How are yes. you doing, Bronson? You never answer this question. Uh, I'm all right. Um, we got rid of one of our clients at the house. That was really uh, terrifying. Nice. So I'm a, I'm a little more relaxed at, at work. So, so that's good. I heard you guys, so you don't, I won't be too relaxed yet. From what I am hearing, he is mostly uh, easy to deal with. Yeah, all but two days a month. <laughs> yeah. So... Uh, but yeah, so that's generally good. Uh, Metal Gear's coming out, so I'm excited for that. Until Dawn is so close now. It's out, it's out, can, it's out on payday. I know. You can best believe I'm picking that up. Yeah, that's my big game that I, like, I, I looked at my budget, I'm like, I can afford one game for the next two months, and, like, Metal Gear was a no-brainer. Like, obvious, obvious, like, fuck oh. yeah, I'm getting Metal Gear. I might be getting an apartment, and if so, then I might have to put off on the apartment. All right. Well, anyway, Anthony. Yes. Video games. Video games. Hey, I played Smash Bros. Online for like the first time in years. So was it like? How su- was that? Was it super laggy? Uh, actually, no. Well, it depends because obviously. You have to sync all four connections to a server, so if one person lags, the whole room lags because it's a fighting game. Of course, yes. And it wouldn't be fair if, you know, one person started warping around. That would... But anyways, uh, yeah, I mean, I did play online like months ago, but today I decided to play For Glory, and uh, kind of did okay. I mean, I got... I, I lost a sudden death, 
which is pretty good. Then I proceed oh. to get two or three last place finishes, which not good. Here's the thing about playing Smash Brothers online. This was true in Brawl, and it's still true today in the Wii. If you can somehow get really good at identifying over abuse tactics and responding accordingly to them, you have a very good chance of winning. Uh, like you don't need to be a professional player. You just need to at least have a good idea of what some of the most overused tactics is. For example, first match I played today, naturally somebody played Roy, and what's the one thing that Roy always does? Well, smash attacks and counter. Thankfully, he got last place. So, <laughs> you know, serves him right for trying to counter. He countered himself off the cliff, too, because he countered midair and then fell down. Uh, that was uh, really entertaining to watch. Uh, Little Mac is a very popular character just because he's so fast and, well, naturally he packs a big punch. Yeah, but he has a shitty air game, so if you can get people into the air... He doesn't that's... need to be, as long as he sits on the ground and just flies across the floor the whole time. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, other things I've seen, uh, Ike is still pretty popular, mainly because of the fact that, you know, when you have a sword that huge, you can KO people very easily. Um, yes. yeah. So you have to be very good at timing your dodges or else you get hit. And uh, Shulk, because that laser sword of his has really good reach and hits really hard, depending what mode you put it in. And also Backslash. Backslash! Backslash! That is another overused tactic you have to get really good at, at you know, anticipating. So basically, playing Smash is like a lot... Playing Smash Online is like a lot of guessing what they're going to do and dodging accordingly. Sometimes it's a whole game of poking... Because you just can't launch your big attacks because you're going to get countered and all that stuff. Speaking of which, you ever notice how in Smash Brothers it's just all that the only reason why anybody knows anything about Fire Emblem is because of OP Smash characters and nothing else? Yeah, yes, I mean, there are think too about many it. fucking think, Fire think, Emblem characters in that damn game. I mean, just think about it. You've got, like well, they, with Emblem. the exception of Robin, because I haven't seen Robin yet. Uh, any Swordsman Fire Emblem character is remembered as an OP favor instead of where the games they actually came from so if i say oh yeah lucina no no one really thinks of fire emblem awakening they're just gonna think oh that stupid marth clone with a stupid counter gotcha and and everyone wants roy not just because they want him to be in a fire emblem game they just want him in smash and that's it can I just talk about how i wanted soren in smash bros for the longest time just can, that would have been we... sweet can we talk about how no more fucking Fire Emblem characters in that game? Sword is the last one. Maybe Titania. No, no, maybe no. No, no I think no Robin's. A, I think None. Robin's a good idea because Robin is like a half sword, half mage guy. That's okay. I know. But that's sword why... characters like Lucina and Marth, okay. Ike, okay. That's all too. Roy, really? No more Fire Emblem characters. Sword uses magic. No, magic. Robin uses magic. Wind magic, though. Robin, no. Robin uses magic. Robin it's sword. fine. I want sword. Uh, I don't care. I don't care. There are too many. Sword was my boy. There are too many goddamn Fire Emblem characters. There are more Every... Fire Emblem characters than any other franchise on that roster, other than Mario. And you know what? Mario goddamn deserves it because it's the grandfather of all goddamn Nintendo games. You know what? Sword. No. No. Here's the thing. There's a there's a full list. If they need to M. cross out like if they cross out Roy and put Soren in, okay, maybe that's okay, because at least Soren's gonna play really interestingly, because Soren's a flat out mage person with no sword whatsoever. Um that would be interesting. But yeah, Fire Emblem characters, I'm just kind of a little t yeah, it's it's a little tiring. I mean Lucina and Marth pretty much play similarly. Robin's its own thing. Ike is yeah, but it's hard that guy I, since Brawl and yeah, like, Roy. Really? Do we really want that? I mean, Roy, just like you, you guys, and like, Lucina all, all, are all the same character. Yeah, like, Roy, least... All the Roy fanboys needs to shut up because, congrats, you've got Roy now. Congratulations. You've got basically a slower, slightly more powerful Mark. Congrats. Be happy. All right. <laughs> now let's move on because, like, Frickin', I'm still sitting here hoping Wonder Red gets into the game one day, because I would totally main that dude, because it's freaking yeah. wonderful 101. Oh, yeah. That game has all the hype, and I just like, man, what's the final Smash gonna be? You just summon M Mommy Robo and just, like, Rainbow Lady yeah. the place. That, that would be cool. Earth! Yes! Yeah, no. Mash A for more powerful, powerful Smash. How about that? 
Yeah, oh yeah, my god. Do more damage. You can see the damage counter counting up, and when it hits nine. Yeah, nine, no, nine, like, just... there are all these famous Nintendo, like, games that are associated with Nintendo, be it third party or first party, that they could bring on instead of another Fire Emblem character. Wonder Red, Bayonetta. To be fair, um, one character I wanted for the Yeah, Bayonetta would be a good one. That'd be cool. Zero. Zero, Zero, Zero would be really good. From the goddamn beginning. He's that a he's a costume for the means, but like Zero. actual Zero would be cool. Yeah, like with the changing blades and. Yeah, Zero would be cool. Um, Simon Belmont from Castlevania would be cool. That would be the most OP character um, in the beginning. Doctor Wily from Mega Man, like he yeah, can be Dr. like Pokemon Wily. trainer and summon different robot masters. That'd be or cool. Maybe like King DDD. Yeah, that'd be cool. Um, God, just like there's so many. Like, someone from the first six Final Fantasies or Crystal Chronicles? From the first six. That's what was the on thing the is that whenever you, I See, the thing is that in that case, you have to go to Square Enix, and Square Enix is probably not going to let that happen because the city exists. Oh, that'd be sick. Yeah, I know. But I mean, so like, you could, like, you could definitely try. Like, for example, Nintendo could just be like, uh, can we just put, like, one Smash character, one Final Fantasy character, and they'd be like, no, the city. Um... I imagine it's very similar to that debacle of, of you know, everyone asks, why doesn't Sony just put Crash in their PlayStation All-Stars game? Or Snake! Bring back Snake! That'd be cool! Like, I didn't like Snake. And Snake was cool! That was funny! That no, was really no. funny! When they threw that in Snake there? Was, yeah. Snake was kind of like a one-off in Brawl, though, it seems. Uh, yeah, I know. But, uh, man, that was still funny that he was in that game. Um, God, what, what are some other ones that, like, you know... I mean, maybe other F Zero characters. Yeah, maybe one. Um, I, I you know, Samurai that. Goro would be cool. Like that'd be neat. Um, just like there are so many characters that we don't need another Fire Emblem Playing character. a Splatoon character. That's a new IP. Bayonetta. Yeah, Splatoon. Like we said, Bayonetta. But like, yeah, Splatoon. Like Splatoon got costumes. So I mean, I get. I mean. A, a me with a gun and a squid kid costume would basically be a squid kid. Yeah, they're... so I mean, but I mean, giving them a special move set like they can turn into an inkling and stuff, like that'd be super rad. You know, they turn into an inkling and can go left and right on the battlefield. Yeah, that'd be cool. Um, you know, instead of this, just oh man, like there are so many characters that Nintendo has. And that has been on Nintendo platforms. They can bring Waluigi into the game. Uh, nobody wants that. I would want. No, that. but uh, just no. to bug you, I would always play Waluigi. That's, that's, I would master him. Oh my god. Oh god. Um, King Croc. Chrono from Chrono Trigger. That's uh, still a Square Enix thing. King K. Rule from Donkey Kong. Um, uh, Skull Kid, even though he's a trophy. But she's a costume. Yeah, she's. You grab someone show. from Hyrule Warriors. That's sort of like a half original story. You could grab a lot of yeah. people from. Yeah, yeah. That's true. That is they could. True. Um, they can't grab Banjo and Kazooie because Microsoft. Um, God. But no, like, like you, you. I mean, if at... you're gonna resort to fire, I mean, I understand that Fire Emblem has like 17 different classes in every single game, but at least pick something that isn't a swordsman. Right, that's, like I think Roy has reason. officially reached the stats of overkill, and the fact that Sword just makes it a little. <sighs> Congrats, guys! You got your you got Roy back. Now shut up for the next five years, please. Yeah, please. like, but please. they'll still beg for him to come back in the next roster, and I'm just like, because Roy in in uh, melee was basically Marth, but slightly slower and more powerful, and then there's Lucina, who is a slightly if you're Marth, I guess. I mean, they got and then the there's, And I'm just like, you basically now have three characters that play quite similarly to each other. You just have to do some slight adjustments. Like, they got the Sin and Punishment characters. That'd be cool. Um, they you know really have... Like what? King Boo. Like, if they could find a way to do that. Boo would be interesting. Yeah, like, we don't really need another Mario character. That but... would be the most effed up thing ever, because you know how bright the world of Smash is with all of its glaring effects and final smashes and laser guns and here's boo oblivious to sunlight therefore making it the most dangerous ghost in history <laughs> anybody ever yeah. thought of that <laughs> i mean yeah that's because boos at least from 3d world you look at them and they just oh, get really shy the guys from elite beat agents that oh yeah really interesting. that would be super cool that would be so Let's awesome bring in another pokemon 
You've got like what's the account now? I know it's like seven hundred, eight hundred something. I don't know. Seven hundred and twenty. Like seven hundred twenty. You got seven hundred and twenty Pokemon to pick from. To be fair, if they there's a few they could add that would just be really interesting. Phoenix like, Wright. Phoenix Wright. That'd be interesting. Like he lawyers you to death. Lawyered. Lawyer. So he'd be Marshall, basically. Yes, he'd be Marshall. He'd lawyer you to death. But yeah, you know I have a point with that. Like shy guy, he just holds up an X and you die. That would be funny. Um. Anyway. Oh, yeah. Like the no more fire emblem characters. No more. No boss. Pantalones. You know if they threw knuckles in, I'd kind of enjoy that too. Can you can you close that door? Knuckles, that tails and knuckles would be cool. I just sometimes sit actually, here and I just think. I sometimes what? like just hope that like freaking like Fire Emblem characters raise awareness for Fire Emblem games, but they don't. They do. That last Fire Emblem did really well. It did really well, but Brawl was a long time ago. Yeah, but I mean, still... it, it did really well probably because uh, because you got to remember like before Awakening, they, Fire Emblem games sold like crap. The DS but... remake, nobody bought the DS remake in America. The Wii version games didn't really sell particularly great. The GameCube version was okay, and the Game Boy Advance versions did good. But Paper it was just Mario. that before, before the, the no. like, just before Awakening, sales of Fire Emblem just weren't good on the Wii or DS. Yeah, and it that... was so bad they didn't bring the remake of their second remake on the DS over, and that got me worried. But like, people got awareness through Brawl because the that one is the best selling Smash in the franchise, and like that helped for the 3DS one. Like, Why is it that the most mediocre Smash gets the biggest sales, really? Uh, I would say the first one's the worst, but... Well, okay, okay, not the most and mediocre, it's, but... And it's, because, and it's because there are more Wiis than any of the other Nintendo... Like, there are more you, you Wiis also, than N64's Wii U's and GameCube's combined. Yes, after, yeah, also, when they made Brawl, they made it the biggest hype fest ever. Because... They because they were hyping it up with this huge subspace emissary campaign, and all these characters, and Snake was gonna be it, and Sonic was gonna be it. So you got third party characters in it for the first time, and it was gonna be a just huge grand game. And it was a huge grand game. It's just I just felt the quality was a bit. But eh. but no, like Paper Mario, like you could still like when you're about to get hit, you can stick to the background and then pop back out. That'd be funny. There's just too many Mario people, I think. Uh, it, Not like Mario characters, but there's Mario, Dr. Mario. Advanced, uh, Advanced Wars. That, yeah, I never that, really played that one. You'd probably like it. You'd like it a lot. You like turn-based strategy, right? On a grid? Yeah. Yeah, you would love the crap out of that game. I encourage you to download it for your 3DS. What is it called? Advanced Wars. Okay. Like, you would love that game. It is one of the, like... That was a Game Boy Advance game everyone hyped up to me, and I played it. I'm like, oh, it's turn-based strategy on a grid. Fuck this. Yeah. Um. All right. So. Um. Yeah. What's his name? Like the Grandpa Monkey. Oh my God. Oh, I forget his Cranky. Name. Cranky. Cranky Kong. Kong. That's yep. fantastic. He just sits in a wheelchair. He doesn't move. He's a. But he's got like just insta kills, insta hits what, with his cane. What about like the characters from WarioWare, or the characters from that Mario Super Mario RPG? Like those would be super cool. Um. Oh my god. You can grab I'm, quite a few things from like obscure Nintendo stuff. Yeah, like let's let's start let's go do do weird I mean, stuff. You you can grab the Monster Hunter dude, because Monster Hunter's a is mainly no a one, Nintendo thing now. To be fair, a Pokemon I do honestly think they should add is Deoxys. I could see it. He has four forms, a defense form, a speed form, power. That's a, that's kind of, that's like cheating a little bit because that's a legendary, which means you push A to win. That's it. No, like, before the battle, like, his different, like, skins are his different forms, and you can pick which one you want to fight with. I know, but that. still, Deoxys is technically a legendary, which probably wouldn't that fit too Mewtwo. well. That was Mewtwo! That's true. Mewtwo is, like, the legendary. Mewtwo is the original legendary. Alright, but we should, uh, we should get on to some, uh, new stories. Um, yes. Churros. Oh, what? Ch oh, churros. I forgot about that. Oh yeah, before we start this, Anthony, we have a thing for you we found today. It is an Oreo churro. Yeah, we... How do you make an Oreo churro? We don't know. We go to Taco John's, and it's in a thing. 
So I'm guessing it is some generic churro paste twisted with a sprinkle of Oreo flavor. No, right? no, it's, no. It's really, it's like a cookie, but it's like cereal, but it's like a churro. But but it's, like it has the consistency of a churro. It looks like, it looks like a black and white churro. And then the inside is like Oreo cream. Yeah, I feel like Oreo is more um, of a flavor paste now than an actual cookie. That's if, they're able to make, if they're able to make a churro... That is a legitimate Oreo churro. It's yeah. Um, okay. Um, but what I was saying is, uh, but the inside of it is like the Oreo cream, but like melted, and then you like you bite it, and at first it tastes kind of like a churro and an Oreo combined together, but then it kind of tastes like like chocolate cereal, like uh, like. Uh, Cocoa Puffs or um, like or, Cookie Crisp or Oreo cereal, and then like you keep eating it, and it goes back to like just tasting like chocolate, and it's weird. It's super weird. It's at Taco John's. If you are near Taco John's, try you, it. You should go buy it. It's two bucks, and it is an experience. Yeah, I think I'm good with stuff like that right now because I'm a little tired of really fattening American foods. That, so juicy. That's so juicy. Okay, well, even Juicy's, I'm just like, I think I've had enough for now. That, that is a lie. That's a lie. That is a lie. Who are you? We will fix What have you done with Anthony? Sa- saving money. You. He's congested. It's okay. That is a ju- saving he's, money. He's, he's not getting enough oxygen. He's congested. He's, he, he's he, dying. He needs a Juicy's burger. Stat. Um, <laughs> just get out to the ER. <laughs> Whoa. Um, this man is suffering from lack of meat. <laughs> Actually, to be uh, honest, it's not really a lack of meat that I'm having right now. If anything, I've been eating like meat like crazy the past couple of days. Because like, freaking yesterday, I went to a buffet and overstuffed myself, so I'm just like, crud, I'm I'm so done. Juicy's will be for another time. That's okay. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. But still, like, like payday. Um, yeah, paydays. Paydays are good to have juicies. Um, but. Um, but we do have some news stories beyond Oreo churros. Those are the most like, important. We were we were heading home, and then we're like we 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 look over to Taco John's. They have this advertisement Oreo churro. And we're like, we we have to find out what this is. And we just locked arms and skipped inside. Yep, and had the Oreo churro, and were confused, bewildered. Um, but anyways, new. News! So, Anthony, the Xbox One is soon to be backwards compatible. How would you feel if it became a compa- backwards compatible with the original Xbox? Uh, I think that's probably reaching a little too far back, because I only have one original Xbox game. That was Halo. <laughs> oh, okay, no, and well, it's not Halo. And it's Dragoon. Mechasol. Yeah, Bronson just handed it to me, and just one random day, because he actually got one with an actual... Uh, Disc like case, case like a, like a good instead case. of a Hollywood video rented one, which yeah, hey, that used to exist. I miss Hollywood. I miss Blockbuster. I miss, I miss them both. Yeah, I miss like, being able to go, walk. Well, that was back in the old days, but I could walk into a store, look at a game collection, and rent something on the spot instead of sitting at the mailbox. You can uh, Redbox is renting games now, and they have like PS4 and Xbox One games. Okay, so you can now rent games from Redbox if you really want to. Well, yeah, but. It's not the same. Uh, yeah, like it's not the same as seeing the cover for it, but the game being missing, and you had to go hunt for the game because it was in the system, so it was in the store somewhere. Yeah, or what was that? A, was an adventure. What, what was always shitty? Like I had the Game Pass. Like it was like fifteen dollars yep. a month, and that. you could pay, you could buy as many games as you wanted. You just had to return the game, and you had to return it and get another one. And I, you would like, you'd want a new release. Like the new Madden comes out, you want to play the new Madden on the original Xbox. They don't fucking have it, because someone beat you to the store. Mm-hmm. So so someone beat you to the store, and they got the original Madden. Uh, like, they don't have it, so check the next day. And the next day. And the next day that you give up, and you check a week later, they still don't have it. It's just, like, months you playing other games because you can't get the game you want. But Redbox doesn't always have it, though. No, they don't. They have it more often than not, though. They yeah. Have, they definitely had it a lot more often than goddamn Blockbuster did. But you have to think, we live in an age now where we can literally just go online and buy it in our systems. Yeah. Compared to getting out of school and rushing straight there. 
and check but, games. But like, it's the, so much easier to get games now than it was then. Yeah, but it's like you can rent them on your system. You can only rent through PlayStation now, and it's laggy and crappy. But like, you can still do it. Yeah, but like we're still not at that point where you can just rent the game and like like you would. And, and it's GameFly became a thing, and GameFly was... GameFly is a great service, but like it's. It's not the same experience, and I will say one one benefit to them never having the game I wanted is I played a bunch of other games I never like, would have normally played. Right, you found some gems. Like, you found some really good games, actually. Like, I remember, uh, I, that's how I enjoyed Harvest Moon. They didn't have a game, and I rented Harvest Moon. I was like, this looks this looks interesting, and I fell in love with Harvest with, Moon. Uh, Animal Crossing for the GameCube. That's how I have with Final Fantasy X. I, I rented. Uh, I was actually with Final Fantasy Thirteen. They didn't have uh, some PS2 games, so I was like, "All right, Final Fantasy X. And I rented Final Fantasy X and just fell in love with it. It ended up being one of my favorite games. To be fair, though, one of the main things I missed about Blockbuster was like, you know how they had that setup where you could like test games out. Yeah, like on Carson, like in yeah, there. Yeah, they had in Carson. They set up a rock band setup, like two guitars, and every day after school, because I had nothing better to do, I would just sit and <laughs> freaking Blockbuster and play Guitar Hero. Um. But and it worked. It was great. Got but no, game. like Redbox typically doesn't have the same selection, and they don't have the unlimited rentals thing. You can go GameFly, but you're still waiting on the mail, and you kind of have to be conscious of when stuff comes out if you actually want to rent what you want to rent. You have to be like focused on that page. Yeah, you have to be like, okay, when's this coming out? The game has to be back like five days before that, so I know I'm getting the new release. So you basically you send it back a week in advance. Yeah, like I just sent back Final Fantasy X on the Vita. And The Witcher, so we can get our six minute access for two upcoming games for that show. Yes, sir. Um, so yeah, like it's. Um, the original Xbox has a lot of games I really liked, though. Uh, I put hundreds of hours into Halo 2 and the original Forza. But why would you um, want to play Halo 2 when your Master Chief Collection has a better version? No, no, I understand that, but I'm just, I'm just, talking, I'm just reminiscing about the original Xbox. Uh, Burnout 3. Dude, Burnout 3, that get, I 100%ed that game, and I also kicked my Xbox because of that game. You kicked your Xbox? I kicked my freaking Xbox. How hard? Like, it's, just full-on boom, or just, like, lightly tapped it? It scratched the disc. That was ins- the, How, why were you so mad at it? Because I was in the process of trying to 100%, but this is back when I used to completionist games. I used 100% every game I played. So, like, me and Serena. Like, Serena does, <laughs> yes. Um... And I was trying to 100% Burnout 3. And the end challenges in that game... The billboards, the race... No, no, this is Burnout 3, not Burnout Paradise. Oh, okay, Burnout 3. Burnout 3, yes. Uh, the uh, Just trying to 100% that game. So, like, you go into the thing, and it says 101%, you have all the cards, you have gold and everything, so mm-hmm. on and so forth. And, like, rage... It, like, I was in this one... Uh, it, was a, it was a time trial. You had to beat this lap in a certain amount of time, and I missed gold by a second, like six times in a row, and I kicked my bleeping Xbox. <sighs> yeah, just straight up kicked my Xbox. To be fair, I've thrown my controller a couple of times. I don't do controllers. Uh, like, that's weird. Like, quit. No, it's because it was wired. Like, the wired controller, I would just throw behind me, and it, like, wouldn't move because my system was heavier than how I threw it, so it would just kind of flop behind That's me. one thing I liked about the original Xbox, is the controllers had that disconnect point. Yeah. So you couldn't break the, break it off. Yeah, like, I never threw my controller at the wall because I liked playing my game still, even if I was mad at the game, so I would just... Like, I would just fling it behind me, like, fuck this game! See, I learned to start hitting my desk. Yeah, just... Just, just like, I have I have a big, wood, sturdy desk that I, that I got from my grandma, so I can just smack the crap out of it. I know, it wakes me up sometimes when you're playing. Oh, oh man. That, that just, reminds me of, like, me playing Smash Online today. It brought back some, um... PTSD? Oh, so it brought back some raging PTSD I had with Brawl. Oh god! Uh, that that, well, that was a pleasant feeling. I'll look at my original Xbox controller or original Xbox collection. Dead or Alive Ultimate. That was the uh, the start of me really getting into DOA. Like that uh, that was that was a game that I put a lot of time into. Um, Panzer Dragon. Beat it once. That wasn't super into it. Really liked it. That was a good game. What? NFL Street. Yeah, that Street game. Two is so much better though. It was, but I got that for free. Um, oh, okay. But uh, NFL Street, I was um, 
I remember that weekend that game came out, I didn't really care at all. But my friend Matt got the game, and he invited me over. Uh, this is around sixth grade, about. And he invited me over to spend the night, and we stayed up literally all night long playing NFL Street. Um, and we kind of had this thing where, like, I always had Randy Moss on my team, and he always had, like, T.O. And it was just this thing of just, like, throwing bombs to Jerry Rice and T.O. Uh, it was just, that, I don't know, that game got really old, because, like, if you played, like, the, in the second one at least, I don't know if the first one was the same, where you could, like, make a character. Yeah. And you played through it. Like, I always made quarterback, and I made him a speed. And he just ran ran on the walls, and it was pretty much a touchdown every run. Yeah, like, that's not playing against other people, though. I know. Like, I never knew that game had online. That was the thing. Oh, we weren't online. We were in the same house. Oh, like, you were just playing against him? Yeah. We were just oh, in the same house. okay. Yeah, I was about to say, because, like, the story mode of that game was the most boring, repetitive yeah, thing Yeah, no, really. that game was story mode was crap. I started making, like, defensive linemen, so I could be like, okay, now I have no control over the game. Um, the, side, like, the side missions were fun, like, tackle the, like, tackle the guy, pop fly... 500. 500. 500. That was fun. That was really fun. Those, uh, like, those missions were fun. But no, I remember like that first weekend it came out, he said, all right, I got this game. I want us to pull an all-nighter playing. And I was like, really? Oh, I don't care. I would rather play Madden or 2K. Ideally 2K. Because uh, that's when 2K, look, T- 2K was leagues ahead of Madden. It was so much better. <laughs> but um, we would play. We played it all night long. And just, dude, Randy Moss and T.O. in that game were so OP. Randy Moss, you could get a touchdown almost every time you threw it to him. Really? Yeah, just, it was so, it was ridiculous. Like, if you put Randy Moss on a streak and just threw it to the end zone, like, I'd say eight times out of ten, he'd probably get it. Damn. Yeah, and then T.O. was so good at, like, dodging people in jukes and stuff. Like, you can, like, you can just nickel and dime down the field. Um, Project Gotham 2, I remember Quinn and I would play that game online all the time, and, like, we'd put it at the Nürburgring, at night, in Mini Coopers. What? Anthony? Well, at least you could sort of do that in Forza now. Yeah. We, we, oh, we, I don't know if we can put rain on the Nurburgring game. Cause, I'm like, pretty man, sure you should, because I know it rains in Germany. Um, Germany's not a desert. <laughs> Germany is not a desert. But no, we, uh, what we do is we go online with a bunch of our friends in Project Gotham 2, go to the Nurburgring, do Mini Coopers, ram each other so we didn't have any lights, and uh, and then race around the, the Nurburgring in Mini Coopers at night. Forza, it it's going to be like, yeah, it's going to be fun at Forza, because like in Gran Turismo, it was already really hard, because when you put the uh, water levels to like 100% in the dark at rain. Now, I don't know, I'm pretty sure both of you have driven in the rain at night before. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it is impossible to see the road because of all the glare from the lights. Basically, yeah, it, it, it is. Hard. It's worse than snow because with snow you could see where cars have driven. You just basically follow the path. Like you could see where the path was, but in the rain, it's all covered in water, and your headlights can't put light on the road because it all just bounces off the water. And then when cars come the other way, good luck. And so, um, can you imagine taking a Ferrari Enzo, nighttime, rain at the Norberg Ring, you're driving around, and oh boy, watch out that puddle, because you're driving a car that isn't equipped with, you're driving a car equipped with slicks. Um, uh, yeah, that's, uh, yeah, no, Project, I remember- Project Gotham is an arcade game, so naturally it's not really as terrifying as it could be in Forza, but, uh. No, I played yeah. that, I played that Forza, um. I played that Forza demo at E3 with you, uh, and oh man, like ri- dri- fancy Forza machine. Yeah, driving in the rain is terrifying. In that, like when it's in that it's game, it's not the most terrifying. Unless it's not the most terrifying until you forget to avoid that puddle. Yeah, that's just because <sighs> the thing is, is that the racing line will tell you to break extremely early and you would just be like why would i need to do this and every other racing game this is the earliest breaking point in history but there's a good reason why the racing line tells you to stop down slow down early because if you hit that if you hit that puddle just a little too fast you're gonna spin out oh wow um yeah, yeah just no. like in real life both times i played that demo i completely spun out but no i like the original xbox and also like if you had a ps2 and original xbox you bought all your multiplats on xbox i never did every you missed out. Everything looked it's better. Because I never really played online. Uh, but everything okay. everything looked better. I had a hard drive. 
I don't know. I never, I never was able to play my play, uh, Xbox online. Never had internet, so. Well, that's fine. Like even then, though, like the games loaded faster because they had a hard drive. But they were more fun on the PlayStation. Like I had Mech Assault and I think Halo and maybe uh, Panzer Dragon. Those uh, were like my three. Games. Okay, but like, why were they more fun on the PlayStation? I don't know. Just there were better games coming out, like the Final Fantasies. Were oh, I'm out, talking about so. multi-plats platforms that are on both. Oh, like, multi-plats. Like I just was never an Xbox kid. I never grew up wanting one. So just when a game came out, I just went straight for the PlayStation version. Like the only I ca- two, ga- I just remember the only two games I ever really thought about on the original Xbox was uh, NASCAR Heat. Don't ask. <laughs> this was back in two thousand one, two thousand two, when I actually watched it on TV, kinda, and actually had a NASCAR simulator. That was actually a good racing game. It was actually really. Like, that game simulated stuff that you don't even see in racing games today from Gran Turismo, Forza, or even Need for Speed Shift. And Need for Speed Shift is also just a bunch of cosmetic BS. But, like, I remember, like, in NASCAR, 2000, in NASCAR Racing 2002 season, freaking, if you let that car overheat and you let that oil temperature and water temperature get too high, your engine's gone. Just, just like how it should be. So it, it, it adds a lot of that simulation aspect that's pretty awesome but anyways the NASCAR heat because well yeah it was just one of those racing games yeah, NASCAR. Back in the day. yeah i mean i was more interested in causing wrecks than actual <laughs> racing which is true for everybody and uh, midtown yeah. madness 3 because that <laughs> man this is something i missed way back in the or way back in the 90s is the midtown madness 1 and 2 city driving games freaking love it that's that's why i love driver san francisco so much because that was like the first time in a really long time i had a city driving game that was like midtown madness so midtown madness 3 um that was xbox original only so that was that was a bummer uh so i got an original xbox for like halo 2 and a couple other games but like the the thing was is i i made once i had one i made sure to buy all my multi-plats on it like anything that was on playstation and xbox i made sure to buy on xbox and the reason was is because faster load times and games look better. Um, because way stronger system. Like, what was that thing? Like, three times more powerful than the PS2? Like, if I'm thinking correctly, Anthony? I know it was two uh, or three. I don't remember okay. how faster it was. But it had a hard drive. So, A, you didn't need to buy memory cards. And B is, like, games look better. Like, every single game that was on both looked better on Xbox. Because it was, like, it used... One, it used PC architecture, and two, was it, um... Two is that it, uh, was a far more powerful system. So... Back when systems actually had real differences between them. Right. Anyway, but, uh... Original Xbox games could one day work with Xbox One. Um, Phil Spencer said today that the Xbox One's existing backwards compatibility functionally could extend the original Xbox titles. He said, uh, the Xbox One essentially has the 360 emulator, but, uh, how much work could go into making original titles backwards compatible? Phil Spencer said, I don't think it's silly. I asked the backwards compatibility team this question a lot. They need to finish 360, uh, compatibility for now. So... Vagueness with vagueness with a vague response. Gotcha. Um, I cannot confirm or deny. I would just give a vague answer that doesn't really answer your question. Yep. I mean, like, I mean, freaking the original Xbox was basically a hastily assembled custom PC, so might not be too difficult. Yeah, that thing had like a Pentium three and a custom Nvidia card. Yeah, it literally was a quickly hacked together custom PC board. So yeah, like the... you know, it might not be as hard as it seems. Yeah. Whereas um, on the PlayStation 3, you either had to rewrite some code so you could release on the PS3, or you had to put actual PlayStation 2 parts in it. Which, uh, man. So this is exciting. I, I have some Xbox One, or original Xbox games I'd like to go back and play. Yeah, see, Which for one? me, I, yeah, um, it's like Panzer Dragoon, I'll just take out my 360. Uh, let's see, uh, Burnout 3. Um, the Burnout 3... Um, they already got Halo. Yeah, they they moved the Halos over, so that one like that was a pretty big one. Uh, Project Gotham Two, Panzer Dragoon. Um, 
Oh, let me see my three or original OG Xbox games. Oh, Fable, the first Fable. I wasn't a fan of the first one. I it is, uh, yeah, I'd say those are the main ones. Uh, Dead or Alive Ultimate would be cool, but my favorite DOA is still four. So, you know. Yeah, that makes. If they make that backwards compatible with the one, like that solves kind of that problem. Um. So yeah. Uh. Anyway. That's, that's, you know, a neat idea that can potentially happen. Like, I'd be down to play OG Xbox games. Yeah, I, I really wouldn't care either way. Yeah. Like, um, I am still a Sony person. I have been since PlayStation 1. Oh, Mech Assault. Mech Assault would yeah, be cool. That's, That'd be a cool that one. That was the only other one I really played. Uh, Crimson Skies. Never heard of it. It was it was this really cool, uh, like, playing game. Um, God, what was it? Knights Old Republic. Oh yeah, that means that was that was a good Star Wars game. Um, it was the only game with the new Star Wars game coming out, like on the seventeenth. Battlefront, yeah, yeah. That still, like Knights of the Republic, is a way different game. It's an RPG. Fair, Battlefront Two was still my favorite Star Wars game. Yeah, time. that was way better on the OG Xbox too. Like looked better, ran better. Like that was that was one I kept forgetting. I was like, it was Star Wars. Um, but yeah, Knights of the Republic was an awesome RPG that would be rattled to bring back. There were other original Xbox games that were cool. A Togi. What's that? Like a ninja game made by the Bloodborne guys. That's yeah, I know that one. Yeah, that game was cool. It looked so weird. I don't think I ever played it though. Um, I would say Ninja Gaiden, but they ported that damn thing to everything. Yeah. Like that thing was on the Vita. There was the original Ninja Gaiden was ported to the PS3 and ported to the Vita, and the second one was ported to the the second one was on the 360, ported to the PS3, and then ported to the Vita. Though the Vita port sucks. The frame rate's awful. It's almost unplayable. Um, so, yeah. Anyway, Anthony, I forgot. Are, were you the one I talked to who was really into airplane games? Uh, I'm sorry? Were you the one I talked to who was really into, like, flight games? Ah, uh, yes. I used to be a flight sim kind of guy. Okay, this is not a used sim. Used to be like, is the key word. I, like, this I is like, a long time ago. This is like flight combat. Oh, okay. Uh, um, no, for me, it was a really oddball flight sim. It wasn't really Combat Simulator, although I did actually have Combat Simulator 2 on uh, the PC, which is way back from 2000 or 2000. It's amazing how some things from 2000, 2002 still hold up. Um, basically, you play the Pacific Theater of, the, uh, of World War II, and well let me tell you when you're getting shot down it's really really yeah it really sucks because you have no control over your aircraft and there's like other crazy things like um for example if you got a damaged plane and you're still flying all that's good right until you found out you got a fuel leak <laughs> you're probably not going to make it back to the aircraft carrier um, Stuff like that is pretty dreadful, but uh, no, it's usually like commercial jetliners was what I did. Um, you would, you might like Crimson Skies though. Like that was a really good game. I, I really liked Crimson Skies. Uh, it was Morrowind. That's another one. Morrowind was really good. Um, Oddworld Stranger's Wrath. That was another really good Xbox game. Oddworld was fun. Uh, Conquer Live and Reloaded. Jade Empire. They had the best version of Psychonauts. Yeah. Oh, Shenmue 2. That was a thing. Shenmue 2. Oh, yeah, Shenmue. Uh, I don't know. There were a lot of really legit original Xbox games. Project Gotham, man. Like, especially when you look at the fact that it was, like, their first system. Time Splitters was still one of the weirdest games ever. That game was cool. I liked uh, it a lot, but it was so weird. It was the weirdest game. Unreal Championship. Quinn really liked that one. Star Wars Republic Commando was super cool. Was it? Yeah, that game was legit. Uh, it, like, it was like uh, Anthony. It was like Rainbow Six, but Star Wars. Really? Ooh. Anthony's reaction was really priceless. <laughs> there. Well, here's a, I mean, I, I played Rainbow Six Siege, so I was like, ooh, and it's yeah. Star Wars. Yeah. Uh, AM, What's it called again? Um, God, what was it? Uh, Star Wars uh, Republic Commando. Yep. Oh yeah, I remember that. Right, the game, the title name, I should say. Yeah, like, um, DOA Extreme Beach Volleyball. That was a thing on that system. <sighs> oh man. Oh yeah, they had the affordable version of Capcom versus SNK, 
Like, if you wanted the PS2 version, it was like $80, but if you wanted the Xbox version, it was like 10 Because <laughs> everyone played fighting with the PS2. Uh, Simpsons Hit and Run, that was another PS2 game. Did you guys ever play that? Yeah, that one was fun. That one was cool. It was a lot of fun, actually. Doom 3 was stupid on there. The I'm first a fan of Doom. The Lord of the Rings games are surprisingly good. Some of them, yes. Some of them... Phantom Dust, I had a lot of friends that were obsessed with it, but I didn't like it. Did you guys ever play Gun? I played Speaking it very slightly. Like that Western Dust. one. Phantom, Phantom Dust. Dust. What happened to that sequel they announced at the press conference in 2014? It got canceled, but then it didn't get canceled. Because uh, I hadn't heard a single thing since they showed a trailer at, at uh, E3 2014 press. Like I said, press it, it was canceled and then it was uncanceled. That's all I've heard. So, development hell. Got it. it yep. Yeah. But Gun. That was, a, that was a cool game. Gun was a really weird game. Like You could scalp people. Yeah, like, it was... It was... Uh, yeah, like, you could scalp people. That game was crazy. Um, I remember the suffering. That game was... Like, like I'm looking at all these games. Conquer Live and Reloaded. There was a remake of Conquer. I remember that one. But I, I, 64. Um, 64, bro. So... Like, there's no difference. There's almost no difference except this version looks better. Um, and had online, which was actually a lot of fun. Really? Yeah, the online, there was, like, this Normandy map, where it was, like, teddies versus squirrels. And the teddies had to defend this point. And just, if you're playing as a squirrel, the chance of dying the second the boat opens is, like, 90%. Because the second you spawn, just hundreds of rocket launcher shots are going right for you. Or there are people on the other team that are spies just waiting for you to get out of the boat and then goes backstab you. Um, it was TF2, but with squirrels, teddies, and tons of blood and violence. Horrible. It was really fun. Who would want to play something like that? That is, yeah. that is not suitable for small children, Bronson. You'd want to play that, wouldn't you? I would play the shit out of that, <laughs> but that's not the point here. Uh, I would enjoy every second of it, too. Just like, look! I just made the teddy bear's head come off. Oh, that's a lot of blood. <laughs> um, oh, PsyOps. That game was PsyOps. Weird. That game was so weird. Like you had psychic powers, and it was like it was basically just a giant physics toy. Mm-hmm. Soul Caliber. They had Soul Caliber, and they got Spawn, which was Spawn funny. Spawn deserves a remake, in my opinion. Like if they did a remake, I feel like it would do really well. Surprisingly, uh, I think Spawn is a character that just doesn't work in this day and age anymore. I. Uh... Just, yeah, he's powered by hell, and he is the power of hell and darkness embodied. I'd like play it. they just like they they said, what is the image of '90s comics? And then they made Spawn. <laughs> That's what happened. Shenmue Two would be a good one because the new one's coming out. Steel Battalion with its forty button controller. That was so. Oh yeah, I remember trying that at Game Expo a couple years ago. Couldn't get past like a minute because it was like, holy yeah. crud. And if you die, you're dead. The, your save is gone. If you don't eject before you die, your save is gone. You have to start the game over. What do you mean, like eject? Like there's like in the forty button controller for this giant mech game, there's an eject button, and if you don't hit it before your mech explodes when you're about to die, you're you you lose your save and you have to start over. That's fucked. <laughs> That's so messed Although up. Although I do have to say that even the like it has a really good hook though because this, because I know this game is really expensive. They don't make much make much just because of this really expensive peripheral you have to have but man the thing i freaking love is that you freaking flip the switch on that thing to turn it on for the first time and i'm just like oh yeah man like that game would never be made today it's like it's like fire it's like firing up a commercial jetliner or fighter jet you just flip the switches yeah, you have to flip the switches and do all the mech prep. It's it was so it, it, it's, it was, it's, it was it's a like giant me. mech simulator. Well, yeah, that's what it is, and it's it's so cool. This is why I like simulators sometimes because you know, oh, in most like I would use flying again for a good example. Um, like in flying games, it's basically oh, just apply gas and it'll automatically start and take off for you. No, I want to sit down in a seven forty seven and flip the maybe like the two hundred switches it takes to turn on one jet engine. There's just something really cool about you know you being an important part in making the thing work. Yeah, I like because like... let's be honest here, mechs and jet airplanes are just they're very complicated machines. I mean, like electronics came in and made everything a lot easier, but 
Back but, in the old days, you basically you but, had to be responsible for all the switches that make the thing work. Can, can we just talk about no one in this day and age would buy a two hundred and fifty dollar forty button controller that worked with one game? No. I probably would if it was geeky enough. It was a me- it was a giant robot game. It was a giant robot simulator. That's what it was. Mm. It was super fun to play. Like it was cool when I got to try it. But I, like when I like I found out the price, I was like, why would you what? Who would buy this? Who? Okay. But there are some people who bought original Xboxes just for that game. Like, I, that's the price of a system. Yeah. Uh, Oddworld Stranger's Wrath well, was you gotta cool... have the thing. you got to have to think that this is something that came out in the 2000s. Yeah, what happened? Too. Like, you got to remember, like, the 2000s was kind of a, um... Well, Hummers were a thing. Hummers are still a thing. Well, it's not as no, big. like people actually bought Hummers back in the day. Today, no one would ever buy a Hummer just because it is the most outlandishly stupid thing you could buy. Not true. I mean, people, just I mean, people, two goats. I mean, like people. Yeah, you could. You still see a Hummer or two once in a while, but it's not like Hummer doesn't exist anymore. And that that um, was a thing of the two thousands. Yeah, I another one that like we talked about Odd World Strangers Wrath. I liked how it was like this god of war action adventure game but then like you pressed a button and it switched to like this first person shooter and how th- your ammo was different critters you had to catch that made different stuff yeah so if you catch like this bug that produces gas with this other one that shoots fire and you fired the ammo it made an explosive and like you'd be punching dudes and press a button and it's first person you suddenly just start shooting them i don't know it's this one seems like it'd be a fun one on the Xbox One, like if they redid Oddworld. Yeah, it's on the PS3, I think. Oh, they, they wasn't it that the free game of the month ones? Or... It was on Vita. I'm not sure if they ever did it on... Because uh, there was an Oddworld that was a free game for, I think, the that, I think Oh, that was uh, the remake of Abe's Odyssey. Mm. That was a cool game. Like, it was a 2D puzzler. The Oddworld games are weird, but they're a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, I remember talking to Lauren Lanning, the creator of those games, at uh, E3 2013... Or no, 2014, Jesus. Uh, at 2014, and I'm like, so, Strangest Wrath, we were going to see another one of those? He's like, he just gave me the standard answer, if people really want it, and this one, and they, well, there's no demand, it could happen. And I'm just like... You mean if the focus group says there's no demand? I I guess. But, I mean, like, we'll never see it. The first four... So, one feature about the original Xbox I really liked was it had custom soundtracks. For games, yeah. you could you could copy your CDs to the hard drive, and then you could put it in custom soundtracks in games. Yeah. So, um, like Forza, two, the first Forza, I didn't listen to any of the game's music. I just used all custom music. Oh wow! Same with uh, Madden. Like Madden had custom soundtracks. Didn't ever use anything but. I uh, um, oh yeah, Forza two. It was a very handy feature. Sad Forza two. It was a really um, big. Hand, it was a really handy feature in Forza Two because when you're doing 50 minute endurance races, and this is back when there was no music that played during the races, you kind of needed to resort to something on a USB thumb drive to not get bored lapping the I, track 50 times. I, so I remember that in um, in uh, ESPN 2K5, you could set any of your music as stadium intro music. So, like, when your players run out, it plays, like, Welcome to the Jungle or whatever the hell you wanted it to play. Yeah. I thought that was super neat. So, like, Anthony, so, you can set the... Big... music? Yeah! Yeah! Boop, boop, boop. Boop, 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 boop. Yeah, just the, the bears coming out to that. Uh, <laughs> no, this whole is not stadium good. Cat for Anthony. All of the NFL goes WTF. Just That'd the... be great. No, just the Panthers are running out. <laughs> For Cry, um, they just have rainbow ta- like rainbow cape song. Great. Um, no, I remember when the 360 came out, and they uh, like every like they said every game has custom soundtracks now. Like Quinn and I were f- like when it, when it was right before the 360 came out, they announced that like that you can hook your MP3 player to the th- the 360 and you play all your music in any game on the system. We were like, this is the best thing ever. And we used it for, like, the first year and stopped. Forever. <laughs> Pretty much. Because we were like, well, we now... We hear the games. Well, not only that, but, like... Well, for some games, we don't really care. Like, when we were playing Perfect Dark, we're like, okay, we, like, we're playing this an online shooter. Doesn't really matter. Like, we'll play Halo and I'll listen to podcasts. But, like, for what... Like, we're, we're like, wait, 
this is kind of a pointless feature because I have a phone right next to me. And like, or like, I have an MP3 player or a computer nearby. So if I really want to listen to music, I don't need to waste my 360's hard drive space or hook my MP3 player to this thing. Beyond Good and Evil already has an HD port, but that was a cool game. Um, the first Fable we've already talked about. Um, so did you guys know the Killzone guys? Their first game was right. at, uh, oh wait, no, I'm thinking of Shell Shock. Sorry, wrong game. But yeah, I was still on a mercenaries crimson skies like i don't know the original xbox had some really good stuff like especially when you got like you have to think like this was their first system competing against the ps2 like nintendo to be fair yeah like they were still trying and like you think of some of the exclusives they put out that were really great and then you like like they had all the best multi-plats Oh, yeah, Grand Theft Auto had custom music, too. Like, if you were willing to wait a year for the Grand Theft Autos on Xbox, uh, they had custom soundtracks. I kind of liked our soundtrack in 5, though. That was... That was good, yeah. Backstreet Boys. I don't, I don't know if they were all that good, but that Th- was They good. are. Like, and they're actually era-specific. So, like, if you're playing San Andreas, it only plays music from the late 80s, early 90s. That's pretty legit. It won't play just, like, the poker face. No. And same thing with Vice City. It'll only play music from the 80s. That's cool. Um, yeah, those. Yeah, man, those Grand Theft Auto games. Anyway, um, moving on to other news. Xbox One is getting this first MOBA. Smite is now officially free to play on Xbox One. But it's not. Uh, your... I, I I don't know anything about this game. Great. Okay. Well. So it's a MOBA still, where you have like creep and resources and stuff, but instead of being like an RTS, it's like an action game. Like the camera's behind him, and you have it's like, like imagine a so game it's like the Ninety Nine Nights or whatever. It like was. God of War, yeah. things like that. Like the camera's just on you; you can't like scroll over the map. Or yeah, no, like no, it's like an action game combined with a MOBA. That's pretty legit. It looks cool. We should play some of it on PC. <laughs> Is it free on PC? Yes, it is free to play on both. Well, we just stick with Heroes. We probably will. I want to. I'll go back to League before I try another new one. Let's go to Dota. Go to Dota. Yeah, I know let's, League. Let's 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 dig into the scary depth that is Dota. Then we get dig into the scary environment that is League. No, I'm good. I'm super cool. We, do we know the I people? I can wreck with Cho'Gath. But we know people that play League that are terrible. Yeah, but we know some that are okay. Yeah, but most are terrible. But those ones we wouldn't play with. They'd leave want to play, and we'd have to always think of excuses. Like, oh, no, no, no. I'm already in the match. Yeah, You're so... in the lobby. Oh, oh that's lobby. weird. Yeah, oh, I got him the kill. Oh, yay. Um, Does Dota work on if you get the kill, you get the experience, or is it if you're nearby, like it's uh, kind of share? Or... It's, uh, it's individuals. And you can actually, uh, you can actually make it so um, if your opponent is killing something, uh, and you get the last hit. Yeah, if you get the last, yeah, that's the last hits and as denies. Also, and that's pretty much stealing XP. Yeah, like, okay. yeah, Dota is sick. Dota, like, and there are a bunch of items, different builds for different, uh, for whatever you want to do, and all the characters are free all the time. Yep, all the characters unlock from start, so you don't have to like farm up stuff. Oh, Anthony, you now own a hero in Heroes of the Storm. What? Yeah, you own Diablo on the PC, right? Yes. You should log into Heroes of the Storm because you get Diablo for free. Oh, goody. So you now own one hero. Congratulations. I own two. You own one, right? Yep, I own the orc. I'm, I know what my next one's going to be. You get Sylvanas. I'm going to probably get Murden. Murden? I can get Murden right now. He's cheap. He's 2000 2, I've got exactly that much. Sylvanas is so expensive. 10000 10000 Um... But yeah, Smite, I, like, I've only gotten to try a little bit of Smite. It's a cool game. Like, if you want a different take on a MOBA, it's definitely something worth looking at. So, uh, next up is some Halo 5 news. Halo 5, coming out this October, October 27th. October 20th, if you're in the system bundle. Yes, sir. Um, I did it a week early then. Cool. Yeah. Uh, the game is unfortunately not going to have the big team battle playlist at launch. Really? So no eight on eight battles on launch unless you are playing the new game type Warzone. 
Anthony, thoughts? Um, now it's finished. What? It's what the feature is not finished. No, no, it's it's the just like big team battle isn't going to be like a playlist at launch. So it'll be a playlist eventually, but they're not going to have like that at launch. Hmm. Okay. Don't know how to feel about that. I never really I'm, played. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of like. I'm kind of like half and half on it, right? Half of me just wants to say, so they're going to trim out a couple features because they know it's not going to make it in time for the launch window, which could mean, you know, if they put it in, it's going to be incomplete and therefore buggy. But at the same time, at least they are not over-promising anything. I think, what, I think it's more of a fact is they want people to play Warzone. Because those, those are, like, the people that want to play Warzone are the same people that want to play Big Team Battle. Like eight on eight, like big, like big maps, big objectives, stuff like that. So I think this is their way of signaling people over to Warzone. Okay. But I, well, I want your thought process on this. Uh, to be honest, I I'm like I, I haven't really played Halo since Reach, so I am not really familiar with Warzone. Well, Warzone's the new game type for this game. Yeah, yeah, I kind of spaced out on that dude's whole presentation because I'm just like, I don't care about shooters. Well, it, it's what Warzone is is like it's it's basically uh, their MOBA equivalent. Um, but Ray, what's your thought process on this? No big team battle in favor of Warzone. Oh, I, I'm not sure. I was trying to think of something because I haven't really heard too much of Warzone besides what you told me. So I, and big team battle, I do enjoy. Like that sounds like it's going to be a lot of fun, but having to wait for it, it's not that bad. It gives you time to try out all the different things. Yeah, you can, the story. You can do the You're campaign. You have plenty of time to. Yeah, play. like you have the campaign, which is supposedly a twelve missions, is what I'm hearing. I heard twelve thirteen. Yeah, and then uh, and then you have the standard multiplayer, which they're going to have four v four, five v five, and then Warzone, which is twelve on twelve. Yeah, aren't they all? Just, they're going to have all the other ones like Cat Play. Yeah, like Rift Ball. Like. Yeah, big team is a big part. Like eight on eight, big maps, capture the flag, Slayer stuff. But yeah. like, the, it's not the only. The, thing. the most entertaining part of Halo for me was always five v five. Anyway, four v four, five v five. Yeah, yeah. Like it was I never like too many people because I can't focus on that many things at once. The only time I ever liked that was like Blood Gulch, like Blood, Blood, Blood Gulch, oh, yeah. yeah, or Valhalla, like maps like that where like it's the big maps, like the really big maps and capture the flag versions. Yeah, because. I don't know, like in those games, I like to snipe and I like to use shotguns. Look, like, blood. And if I can't get one or the other, I just assault rifle, but if there's uh, ten enemies coming at me, I'm just. I, I will always remember uh, the LAN parties of the original Halo and the online matches of Halo 2, 8 on 8, first to 5, Blood Gulch, all weapon ball vehicles. Mm -hmm. It's just chaos. Just banshees, tanks, snipers are going at each other. Like, there's. Like, there's a sniper battle going on while people are just running through the middle of the canyon. And when you have the flag, it is the most terrifying thing. It is just... You mean it's not as easy as go get the flag donut? Yeah. Yes, it's, it's, like, it's like, go get the flag. Uh, but no, like, you're just running through the middle of this giant canyon. <sighs> just like, banshees overhead, tanks chasing after you. Someone's trying so, to... So, like Normandy with Congress Bat Fruity except Halo. Yes, very similar. I, like I said, I'm I was a fan of SWAT. SWAT's my mode because I'm really quick on the shot, but I'm bad at like following you and shooting you in the face. But I can get that first shot in before you do. Yeah. See, I'm very much the opposite. So I'm very much like that's why I like like I don't like Call of Duty. I I've never liked the game unless I'm playing with friends. I, but I'm really really good at Call I, of Duty. I like so for me Call of Duty. I I've never been good at it except for Black Ops Two. Uh, Black Ops 2 was legit because they made some certain changes to that one to where you could like make it so you could survive longer. Yeah, like as you know, the beta came out for yeah. Black Ops 2. And 3. we played a whole three matches before the beta broke. Yeah, and my first match is like 17 and 5. Yeah, my first match I did bad. My second match I broke even. So I was, I was happy with that. Yeah, like I'm really good at like just I can find you before you find me. Yeah, see, I'm very much good. Like I'm the opposite, which is why I'm good at Halo, is because it's like you can find me first. But you can't follow through, because I, because I am going to bait you into getting yourself killed. 
I'm gonna throw a grenade at you, charge the grenade, and you're gonna forget it's there. Yeah, or like, what I'll do is I'll like, is I'll, or, you know, there's always the option of, I'm better at getting headshots than you. Or, you know, one thing that I really always disliked about Call of Duty is you start with whatever weapon it is. Yeah. Versus Halo, it's like, everyone starts the same, go get your gun. If you want your, if you want your awesome gun, go get it. Go fight for it. Like, I always liked that. And part of the reason I liked it is it dis- like it discourages people from camping. Yeah, like, because, you can't start with the weapon you want to sit in the corner. Yeah, like, it's like, okay, if I want the sniper, I'm going to have to go fight for the sniper. And even then, eventually it's going to run out of ammo, and I'm going to have to go make another pass to go get it. Yeah. So... But I think they like, and I think that's one thing that gives some players a huge advantage. Like, if you're like prestige twice, you have every gun unlocked, all the sights unlocked, and if you prestige, you're back to level one, so you're playing with new people again. Yeah, and like, so, like and you're like, you know what you're doing, even if you don't have all your guns. Yeah, you'll just sit in the corner with your red dot sensor, invisible camo, upgrade on, and then just take people off like, like they're picking. Call of Duty has been so. Uh, and can we talk about how kill streaks are like the most bullshit thing ever? Y- how, yeah, like, I'm the best player in the game, so now I'm getting rewarded with missiles that heat seek from the sky. Yeah, like can we, which that's another thing I always liked about Halo is the like, is, do you want to be punished for being good? No, but I, I don't think you should be rewarded. I don't think you should be like, man, you're already just spanking the other team. I mean, so it gives make, people an incentive to get better. Sh- yeah, but probably like, not the best way to. You know, like, he's like, we're gonna make you. He's like, we're gonna give the, we're gonna give you rich players more. Well, there's also anti kill streaks. Like, if you die four times in a row, you'll get like a death perk. It'll be like final chance. Yeah. And when you go down, you'll still be alive. Yeah. So. So they, they kind of balance it out, but that's only after but, you die four times in a row. And like, even I'm not that bad. So I mean, most of the time I'm not. I can usually get one kill in, and. You look at a game like Halo, where, like, everyone starts the same, match stays the same the entire way, or Uncharted 3 did the opposite of killstreaks. So Uncharted 3 is, if the other team has more than a 25-point lead, so 25 kills on you, your team, the losing team, gets a bonus to help catch up. To make... See, I don't know about that, because, like, if our team's doing good, and, like, your team gets this perk and you guys catch up right away and win, I'd be super upset. The thing is, like, it it makes games more interesting, though, so you're never, like, just dominating someone so hard that it's boring. Yeah. Because, like, th- there's been that Halo game where we're up, like, 45 to 12, and it's like, this is boring. This is really boring. Because mm-hmm. um, in all these games, you want close matches. Like yeah, that's yeah. ideally what you want. No one likes a blowout. I don't care what game you're playing. Like no one wants to be like seventy-five kills to ten. Yeah, you don't want to be on either end of a blowout. It sucks. Yeah, like if you're winning, it's just boring because everyone's dying because they they're really bad, or you get put on the really bad team against a team that's communicating super good. And they're just like, okay, we're gonna go around side. I got this backup. I'm gonna put. I'm gonna slide down the stairs like a ninja and shoot you in the face. That happened to you. That, that was fun. Great. That was cool. Like most of the time when I die from stuff like that, but that was like that was so legit. They jet boost down the stairs and Ted shot me. I was like, okay, I can't be mad at that. That was too legit. <laughs> that was way too legit. Um. Uh, but no, like that's why Call of Duty always irritated me. Is like, it's the you, you like the you, the rich get richer. Yeah, like okay, if you're high level, you get these amazing guns that just crap all over the late early game guns, uh, and then you throw on the fact that like, oh, I got a seven kill streak, so here's this helicopter that's gonna get like eight more and give me another kill streak. To be fair, sometimes real there's one really good player on a team though with a lot of cre- with a lot of bad players and he'll get a good kill streak and get the helicopter and that'll balance the game out though. But that doesn't so happen like see. that doesn't happen often though. Like more often than not like there's that one you, guy. Like you get, it, do you guys remember the insta win? Oh, the, the nuke. nuke. Kill streak yeah, the, the nuke. The 25 but, kill streak. But can we yeah, can we talk about ant like I saw that happen twice. Like, can we talk about Andy? So, Anthony and I have this friend <laughs> named. So, Anthony and I have this friend named Andy who was obsessed with Call of Duty. He was obsessed with Call of Duty. So obsessed with it. Like, he could get a nuke like every other game. Damn. Um, 
he was legit. And, like, if we played with him, it was just unfair. Like, it was just unfair for the other team. Because even if he doesn't activate the nuke, he's like, helicopter. Seven more kills, helicopter. Helicopter. And the other team just loses, like, sentry. Radio uh, chatter like must be fun. Care package incoming. AEC 130 online. This online. That online. This online. You would think that we somehow have a giant stockpile of money to hire bajillion PMCs to do the work for us. You just hired the Russians to bring in your goods before you even got the kill streaks. Oh, yeah. <laughs> them in gold tokens. Like, here you go. Like, it... So, like, that's always been my thing. Like, it never feels like an even playing field from either side. Which, Halo, with the exception of Halo 4, has always felt like an even playing field. Like, every time you start a match of Halo... I, I, I don't know. Well, yeah, like, if you're with someone who's, like, super good... Like, but... there are people in Halo that just can make matches unfun. Yeah, but you also have more individual influence over a map, and like I know, and I know it's because that guy, it like okay, that guy beat me at the point of the weapon. He didn't spawn with it. Like everything just feels more like you had to earn that, and you had to fight for that. Like it's, it's very much the okay. Well, he's really good with the sniper. But at the same time, like I, I enjoy that about Call of Duty, how you can start with a gun you like, because in Call in, in Halo, I'm mediocre. I am okay at Halo, so most of the time I don't get the guns I want. I won't have a gun I like in, like for matches at a time because my team will get there first. I won't spawn near it. Someone's always has it on them, and it doesn't spawn again until they either die or it runs out of ammo. So Lily, they can hold the weapon the entire game. But at that point, it's on you to get better at the game. It's not the game giving it to you. Yeah, like... but you can't take it from your teammate. That's what I'm yeah, saying. Yeah, like... that. Yeah, but then, like that is annoying. Like, but, if your teammate has it, you literally have to betray your team if you want that weapon. Yeah, but at that point, it encourages you to start using other weapons on map, I guess. So, you know, like, and most of the time, they make it so BRs are the starter. So it's, yeah. it, the BR everyone likes. It's a great weapon. I, uh, I don't like the BR. Really? Oh, wait, no, the BR, yeah. yeah I was thinking one. the two SMGs. The SMGs, yeah. I was thinking SMG. I was like, no one likes those. What are you talking about? Yeah, like, everyone... You're 90 shots. Just... Yeah, <laughs> The bullet hoses. Yeah, they literally don't do damage unless they, you're up close. Person. They were really good in three, though, but no one used them. They were really good in three if you got up close with someone. Like, if you were right up to someone with two of those in three, they were dead. In that, three like, seconds. just shreds through their shield and health. Um, but no, I. Like, there are certain things I like about Call of Duty. Call of Duty has some really good maps. I, Nuketown. You know, Nuketown is still my Nuketown favorite Nuketown's map. Nuketown's fun. Any shooter. Um, I really like Overwatch from the. From four, the one with the hit the grassy hill. Yeah. Um, but I don't know, like that's why like sw like SWAT and Halo was the first thing I ever played, and that's because I was I realized I was quicker on the draw than everyone else. Like, like I could sneak around a corner and headshot you before you see me. But if I headshot you once, you can duck behind a wall, throw a grenade, and then your friend comes behind the wall, hits me with a BR, so I try and duck, and then you come back out and shoot me. Yeah, see, I I always like liked... that one. I can just boop boop boop. Three headshots, three downs. Yeah, like, to me, I never liked that because, one, I'm not super quick on the draw, and even if I was, like, there's no fight. There's no fight in it. There's just one shot, they're dead. Like, I, I don't want my enemies to have a fight. I do. I want uh, them to drown in the pool of their own blood. Like, I like having that, that combat. Like, I started, like, when I started playing shooters competitively, I started with Unreal. Yeah. Which is, like, that's always a fight because, like, you're doing flips around the map and, like... Yeah, like, you've seen me play Halo. I'm... Mediocre. You're a little better than me, I'd say. Oh man, you're out of practice. So I'm really out me. of practice. Yeah, I'm a little better than you are. Um, it, but in Call of Duty, there's no competition. Yeah, no, that's exactly. Because that's how I play. Like, yeah, you've seen me play. I I still like snipe around the corners just in case yeah, it's, it's gonna come out just out of habit. It's I mean, and that's part of the reason why I like Titanfall too, is because it, it it's, it's the best of both. It's kind of like you get that moment where you can quick scope and stuff, but you can still fight people. Like, you know, um, like, where you can shoot someone a couple of times where it takes them to go down. Yeah, like, you, there, there's none of the Call of Duty thing where, oh, you saw me first, I lose. You saw me first, I lose. You saw, uh, Like, that was always so frustrating to me about Call of Duty. Like, you see me first, I lose. You see me first, I lose. And it encourages fucking camping. To be fair, my favorite strategy in Call of Duty, I think it was one or two, is literally just the handgun and the knifing. And I just run around the map. I don't stop sprinting the entire match. I just stab you in the throat. 
and it's the most fun, and it's the most aggravating thing for other players. You don't have any times I've been cussed out because of it. And it's great when people cuss me out in a shooting game when I stab them and kill them. They're like, you're ha you're like, I've heard the spectrum of like, you're hacking, you're cheating, you're using mods, and I'm like, no, you're just bad at aiming. <laughs> Oh man! If you you can obviously see me coming. I'm sprinting at you. I am on the radar. Like that's and ah oh, man, that's like like you said. I was talking about Call of Duty. Yeah, about, yeah like I, robot V arm though. That's pretty. Cool. That's that's why I like this new one. It's dumb. Like it's super dumb. Gravity spikes, the rocket launcher, a bow and arrow. I want to try the bow and arrow. It I looks really stupid as hell. Like like who th who thought of that like. An SMG, like it's basically a rocket on the end of a bow. You're Hawkeye for the most part. Anthony, are you still here? Yep. Okay. Um. Yeah. Like I, I just always thought that Halo was a better game and more balanced game, and it, like easier for new players too. Like if you get into a match of Halo, like once you know the map layout, you can be competitive in most scenarios. That is bull. Halo 2 especially, that is bull. <laughs> uh, I don't know, like, the remake of Halo 2 or Halo 2 Halo 2? Both. Like, <laughs> I've tried both, and legitimately, I'm like, okay, I enjoy this weapon, I'm gonna try this weapon. Okay, this weapon is not the same as in 3, 4, or 1, so I'm gonna try a different weapon. But it's just, like, I don't know, just in Halo, it's all about map control, and if you control the map, you won. Yeah, that's why I like it. But, it's so boring after but, that point. I'll just go out and get killed because I just want to go find someone to fight. Like, the thing is, though, Call of Duty is the opposite, where it encourages camping. Like, in Halo, you have to control these different points that aren't always easy to control. To be fair, though, the best thing on Earth is just hitting a sniper in the head, or a camper in the head. Yeah, but like, in, like I said, in Halo, it encourages you to move around the map, to pick up power weapons... And control certain points on the map, except for four, because... Let me remind you of something. Remember when we played doubles in Halo and those guys? Yeah. Remember them? Yeah. Yeah, but here's the thing, though. Like, we, we legit communicating. Yeah, but we'll play, like, 4v4s and have great times versus, like, you know, they're dudes who just totally camp in COD and just own that camping spot. And because they spawn with, like, even if you kill them, they spawn with that weapon again, so they're going to go back up there. Like, in Halo, if you kill the sniper and take it with them and burn their ammo, they can't snipe anymore. Sniper no sniping. <laughs> you know, like... Calm down, Dora. <laughs> you know, like, there's no way you're getting back to that point. Wait, does that make Anthony Booths if you're Dora? Anthony, do you want to be Booths? I'll be the map. Do I want to be what? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, Use that uh, Booths? Yes, uh, well, you... I mean, Ron, I don't so think I catch the reference. Dora the Explorer, the monkey. You see, I didn't watch that show. Oh, okay. Uh, okay that makes so sense. I have no idea. Uh, maybe if we gave okay, maybe in COD they give everyone a communist dragon. Does that make it better? Yes. Dragons would make any game they better. Make, they combine dragons skill down with is one of the most three. overused things ever. Kill uh, streak ten. Summon the Dragon Legion. See, now 30 kill streak. You get more than just a new. You get a that, dragon that breathes that, fire and everybody. No. You get an army of dragons that just comes down and burns everyone. They just start right. to spawn let, points. Let, let, let me let me uh let me run this by you. Ten kill streak. Zombies. You get zombie army. I wouldn't say a zombie army, but everyone you kill during that streak becomes a zombie. Yeah! Yeah, alright. Man, man, see, how much better does Call of Duty come when you add stupid things to it? To be fair, zombies is one of the main reasons I'll play COD. That's, like, the only reason. I'd rather just play Left 4 Dead. Like, Left 4 Dead gets boring, though. It's the same maps over and over and over again. But you Yeah, but the director this... changes things about them. You don't know about Maybe. that? Like, if, if okay, so there was this program in uh, the is this Left 4 like Dead. online, or? Yeah, this is when you play online. Uh, I've never played online, see. Um, actually, I think it works in single player. I'm not sure. Uh, but there's this, thing, there's this program in Left 4 Dead known as the Director that changes the the moment-to-moment -moment experience um, depending on how well you're doing. Especially if you're playing on the harder difficulties. So if you're playing on hard and like it notices you're just just destroying, like you're just kicking butt, it'll give you less health packs and spawn more special zombies. But if you're uh, barely managing, if you're barely managing, it'll spawn more health stuff. And less special topics. I don't know. Like that's why I like zombies. Like 
because I like Left 4 Dead. Left 4 Dead was is easily one of my favorite games to play with friends. It's really great, like especially too with the axes and melee weapons. The it guitar. Got, it got really fun in too. That rock stage, bro. But zombies. That was the original one. I played with friends. I always enjoyed it, and it was always a challenge. Like it was always something different. Like, like you knew, like you knew where everything was gonna be for the most part. In Left for Dead, in Zombies though, it was depending on how you opened doors, depending on how well you were doing, depending on what you unlocked and what you did. I, I I always thought zombies was super interesting, but like I like at the end of the day, I always kind of preferred what Left 4 Dead was doing with zombies, and I was like that uh, that's gonna be my zombie game. Uh, so we have breaking news. We have the most breaking news. So Giant Bomb, and Bomb dot com is as doing a series where they where they play through the Mario parties. We're planning to do this. Screw Attack, Screw Attack did it. They did it all in one day. What do you mean? Screw Attack played 50 turns of each Mario party in one day. Damn! In a 24-hour period. That's a record. Uh, that has to be. But they at PAX Prime, they are doing 100 turns of Mario Party 5. Let me remind everyone, that is four dice rolls. That is 400 rolls of the dice. To, to also put that on everyone, that is eight hours. Because, yeah. yeah. To put that else on everyone, yay. Yeah. All that, you, bring your popcorn, just, bring wa- your sodas. Watching them suffer is the best part of that show. Yeah. And it's not even watching them suffer. Like, my twin, Dan. Yes. My buddy, Dan, like... He's smiling through the whole thing, and that's gonna just be me. Everyone that else is, is honestly miserable. gonna be me. Like you're gonna be like you'd be Jeff. You just be like, I hate everything about life forever. <sighs> All right. And you'll just complain the whole time. I'll be like, this is fun. But we should get back on news. Yes. Anthony, can I? Can I say this one? I, hold on. Can I just say the next? An- one? Anthony, you're still with us. Yes. I know you're tired. We'll get through the rest quickly. Um. Can I? Go ahead. Okay, everybody. For all of you iPhone users and app lovers, Final Fantasy VII is co- out on iOS today. It is officially an app. It is a full game. But it is $15. 16 bucks. Yep, fifteen ninety nine for the full game on your iPhone. What? 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 But you can pay like seven, seven, and get it on PlayStation. But then again, I but, know a lot but, of people who are moving phone. around. Yeah, like, I know a lot of people who are on their phone constantly or don't own a system. Like, if I didn't own a system and I heard about this, it, I would buy it immediately. I don't... Like, I own it. I already own it on PlayStation. I'm going to buy the remake when that comes out. And I don't have the phone space for it right now. Otherwise, I probably would have already bought it. Uh, I don't... I Just don't. because, like, 7 was good. 7 is top ones for me. It's not my best. It's definitely not my favorite. But it is up there. I don't, I, I don't because know. Because you know how Cloud drowns Aerith because obviously because he's a murderer. Yeah, because Sephiroth didn't hit any important organs. Cloud just found her as like, oh no, she's still slightly breathing. I'm gonna give her a watery grave. <laughs> drowned, drowned, you smirky. I like, I man, I don't. Beep, beep. Here's the thing. God beep. dang it. It it's. You know, it's sixteen bucks, which is double the price of PlayStation Three or Vita, and I believe Steam. So it's more expensive than the Steam version too. Yeah. And like, this is on Steam; it'll run on any computer. I think it's on PS4. It's coming to PS4. It's not on PS4 yet. It's on PS3 and Vita. Like, if you care about Final Fantasy, you probably have one of these systems. Yeah, but at the same time, like, like your crappy three hundred dollar laptop can run Final think Fantasy. Of it, VII. Like, think of people who are always on business, though, like traveling, like. The gamer on the go, like, because I know a lot of people... If you are a gamer on the go, you don't give a crap, because you own a 3DS and have plenty to play. I don't know. Every now and then, I would just like to whip out my phone and just have a game that I actually enjoy. I have one, Battle for West Knot. It's a really fun game. I only play it when I'm using, like, when I want to play on my phone. Also, that's a game that, like, I just would not want to play on a phone, partially just because of screen size, partially because... I wouldn't want to do movement on that phone, like on the phone. Yeah, that like, that's... the biggest thing for me, like, trying to use that little invisible joystick. Yeah, like, that's that'd movement be super enough, annoying. Movement is already hard enough on the PlayStation. 
Um, yeah, like that game is already a pain to move because it doesn't have an analog stick. It just has a keypad because it came out before analog stick yeah. existed on PlayStation. Like that game, just like like oh PSP, it's also on PSP. You can download oh, it on yeah, PSP. Crisis Core. No, just Final Fantasy VII. You can download PS One games. Oh yeah, that's true. So just like that game is on god dang everything. Like. I don't know. I just and sixteen dollars is the insane price to pay for that game. Like if it was five, I'd understand. Yeah, like it was like ten even. Yeah. Anthony, do you have any commentary on this? How many times can they re-release Final Fantasy VII before the remake comes out? It could be five years before oh, that remake comes out. out. For all we know, There's... there was the first PC one. There was PC. There was the PS3. The PSP, the Vita. the Vita, the Steam one, the Mac one, the uh, PS4. Do we say PS4? Not one. That's not one. It's yet. coming though. But it is. Co- I thought you went out right now. It's right? coming, and now we have iOS, and I guarantee you it will come to Android. Oh yeah. It's so it's... right now we're at eight with one coming, so seven. So the eighth one is coming, and it'll probably be nine. Yeah. And how much do you want to bet? That because it's also coming to Xbox One, the remake is just yeah. coming later. It's, gonna, it's a the time. The original release. one will come. The original will come, so we will be at ten. So Anthony, the answer is ten. Ten Final Fantasy Seven, and then there's five. five more before the remake actually happens. I thought I was annoyed that I had to buy four copies of Final Fantasy Ten, <laughs> but. Now I see the true evil. Why don't they do this to Crisis Core? Crisis Core was a way better game than Final Fantasy VII. No, Final Fantasy VII has a more fanatic fan base. Oh, I know. Therefore, more money. It's about the fan. But, but Final Fantasy VII Crisis Core is a Final Fantasy VII game. Yeah. But 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 the original is more fanatic. I yeah, know, which is in. which is a shame because I Cri- will wave my ba- my fl- uh, my fan banner. For this game, you need to play Crisis Core. I've played Crisis Core. It's a great game. Like that, the end, you didn't beat it though. No, I did that, not. The end of that game will just rip your heart out. It is so heard, sad. It is heartbreaking. I, I think that's one of the reasons I stopped. Though, just like, I don't want to lose. I want to lose my soul. You, you should. You should finish Crisis Core, especially before the remake of Seven. Like it's, like it sets up so much backstory for Seven. You're just so, so excited much. for that that <laughs> spa scene, aren't you, Ronson? Oh, the saucy spa scene and the cross dressing. Hmm. It's just going to be a lot of Colonel Armstrongs from Full Metal Alchemist just standing, flexing in a corner. <laughs> like, how are they going to do that scene in they're today? They're going to put it in the hot... I wonder if they're going to do the hot sub scene, too. Yeah, are they going to... Like, let me wash you. Let how... me wash you while you wash me while you wash me. How are they going to do the hot tub scene? How are they going to do the cross-dressing scene? Because they said those are going to be in it. They're just going to straight up do it. Just straight up do it and just be like, F Americans forever. <laughs> just like... Here's the scene where Cloud probably gets raped by a bunch of oiled gay wrestlers. Um, like, how are they going to port this to America? Um, anyway. Anthony, are you excited to have a chance to play Final Fantasy VII? Again. If they release the remake, which could okay. be a very long time. Yeah, it's coming. I really don't have an interest in playing the really old version, though. Yeah. All right. You know they need to remake. It's like, oh, it's the greatest thing ever, and I look at it, and I'm like, I kind of feel like there's a bit of a technical deficiency here for me to properly enjoy this game. The one game that they released for the PS4, I'd probably buy. What? Nino Kuni. Like yeah. that game was pretty on the three. I can't just, I can't even imagine it on the four. Yeah. Um. Uh, all right. Well, moving forward, we got Destiny news. Uh. All right, so I burnt myself out on this game. Well, when you play it for eight hours a night for three weeks straight, yeah, you kind of you know. Uh, but we'll be excited for new content. In the oh yeah, game. when the expansions when there is new the stuff to do. Yeah, new raids, new missions. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so if there are some news, the twenty-seven things that you need to hear from today's reveal. If you are currently level 34, you will start it in the Taken King as level 34. A new sword weapon called Arc Edge was shown. It allows you to defend using L2. It is effective against solar and void attacks, but is less effective against arc attacks. While in the tower, you can select which item you want to have equipped on your character. This will be reflected by showing on his or her back. Ghost shells that you find now have special features, like the ability to help you find spirit bloom and stats that affect your intellect, discipline, or strength level. 
The new light level system is an average of your attack and defense across all equipped items, including ghost shells and player artifacts. Your strength, intellect, and discipline stats are now clearly shown on the user interface and includes actual cooldown times for each ability. You can now hold 32 quests in your inventory. What? Yep, so instead of 10, you can hold 32. That is awesome. <laughs> quests can now be turned in at any time in the game. No word on the app yet. Class items like capes, bonds, and sashes now have perks built into the armor. Yes. Vault space will be doubled for weapons, increasing it to 72 slots. Nice. If you buy the Taken King, you automatically level to 25 with a special call the item called the Spark of Light. This will boost you to the minimum level for the Taken King so you can play with your friends. Collections will keep track of the exotic ships, emblems, and shaders that you have collected and will let you know uh, you, if you have still not acquired them. Factions now must be pledged to and can only be swapped once a week. Once you pledge to a faction, you can gain reputation for the faction through the Vanguard and Crucible. Any faction reputation gained in year one will carry over to year two's new system. Reputation packages acquired for gaining levels with Gang Vanguard and Crucible are now guaranteed to deliver a legendary and will have an increased chance of dropping a shader. Really? So let's say like you're level three with the Crucible. Uh, almost, yeah. Okay, well, I'm level 2 with Crucible. Okay, when you hit level 3, you will be guaranteed to get a Legendary in the mail. Um, new, new quests and bounties have been added to the rotation, and completing all five weekly bounties will grant you Nightfall tier rewards. Dismantling a Legendary item now gives you Legendary marks. Exotic blueprints will allow you to regain anything you've lost using the new collection system. Also, exotics are shared across accounts now. That's... So the exotics are account-wide. The best items in the game are now account-wide. So you can be play on any, any so, character. Yes. So you can be like, I want to take it off my level 30 warlock. So I, I have Thorn on my uh, Titan. You got Thorn? I have the quest. It'll be done whenever I go back to the game. Mm -hmm. But like, I have Thorn on my Titan. So now if I level a Hunter to 20, it'll be on my Hunter. Same thing with my Warlock. So they'll each have one. Not yes. Just... It'll carry over. Your oh, exotics wow. are shared. Uh, not, all, not all exotics are upgraded for year two. Uh, some year one exotics have been upgraded. Uh, let's see. Uh, while damage levels have been normalized, all weapons you currently own will not be losing power, even though their value has changed. The Cryptarch will sell legendary Ingrams for legendary marks that are guaranteed to turn into a legendary item. Let's see, the Gunsmith will now allow you to try weapons. Gaining reputation with the Gunsmith will allow you to get a new gun every Wednesday. For all Year 2 legendary exotic weapons and armor, there's a new infusion system that allows you to consume a powerful weapon to boost the attack of your favorite weapon. Huh. Sounds like there's just a lot of really weird new stuff that sounds kind of awesome. Yeah, like, it sounds like they are fixing that game in significant ways. Including getting rid of their dumb light leveling system for a normal leveling system. Oh, light's gone now? Light's gone, and you now... Hey. You now oh, level light normal. But how are you going to get rid of the darkness without light? You have, yeah, bronze. You, you have light, it's just the aggre... It's just not your level statistic. Did you know Kingdom Hearts is light? Uh, the, we're, okay, we have two new story. We have two new stories. Questions, and then we're done. Okay. Yo, Kai, watch the new game by the Nino Kuni team has a release date. Ray is excited. Very. Yokai Watch is coming out to the Nintendo 3DS with over 200 different yokai to discover, and is created by the Professor Layton developer Level Five. Nintendo is publishing Yokai Watch and is partnering with other companies like Disney and Hasbro with the show and toys based off the franchise. It is coming out November 6th. I'm excited. It has become a sensation in Japan, raking in over a billion dollars with toys and merchandise. There are three different versions of Yokai Watch, uh, were the were two of the top best selling games. Uh, and the show is coming out on Disney XD this fall, followed by a manga in November and toys in January. So I'm broke again. Okay. Thoughts, Anthony? I probably should get Nino Kuni at one point. You'd probably you like that should, game. It's really a really good like game. That, Anthony. I remember we Freaking got to the studio Ghibli. 
Not even I mean, that's just Studio one Ghibli. Thing. Just it's a really good game. All right, so it's like Studio Ghibli just happens to be the amazing icing icing on the cake, right? Yep. Yeah. All right. Next up, Japanese Splatoon esports tournament offers a million dollars in prize money. Over a million. The best but Splatoon. It isn't the international. It's not. You're right. What? The, the you are correct. This is not a Dota tournament. Good job, Anthony. A plus. <laughs> uh, but still, a million dollars for Splatoon. Okay, get the, out the, the rollers, people. It's on. The, the best Splatoon players in Japan will soon be able to compete for one million dollars. Uh, the Kadokawa, the Kadokawa. Duango Corporation is hosting the Splatoon Esports Series, which features 40 events across eight cities. The tournament begins September 17th in Fukukawa, and the grand finals are scheduled January 30th through the 31st of next year. In addition, contestants will have a chance to have some prize winnings. Uh, let's see. That's about it. So, if you like Splatoon, there you go. I should play that one day still. It's a really good game. I've heard. I just don't have Wii U. Yep. All right. So, we have questions and comments. Japanese government is turning off kids into squids. Pocket ink. Wow. What did I just hear? Pocket ink. Wow. It's, imagine Waluigi is every is ink clean. That's terrifying. That, wow. Ah. I was thinking of Dale Gribble, but okay. I saw one as Waluigi, and now I can never picture Dale again. Okay. And it was literally just, all it said was, wah, and it showed pocketing. I was like, oh my god, this is too great. All right, hold on. All right, so, first comment is from Cray T. Destiny is still a thing, question mark? Lol, good show. Um, apparently, from what I'm hearing from Bronson, it's becoming more of a thing, as in, like, you can actually play it and feel like it's not a giant load of hyped up disappointment. Yeah, it's 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 because let's like be honest, I haven't touched popular. this thing. I haven't it's touched like this Halo game. Popular. I haven't not touched Destiny since last September. It it was like we just basically did sixty minute access of it, played it together a little more. I hit the soft cap and then just completely stopped because and everyone else completely stopped. And we, we, nobody really cared for a long while, and it wasn't until, like, you know, maybe they'll pass a month or two, and all of a sudden it just became, hey, Destiny is actually viable, they just needed to work on it for another year. Ray and I played for three weeks straight, and then got burnt out. So, and then we, I just decided to wait for Taken King. Pretty much. Otherwise, by the time that comes out, I won't want to play Taken King. I, mean, I might give it another chance, but the thing I is, I probably have to do it now, or else the expansion's going to come out and everyone's going to move on. Well, no, the, the expansion boosts you to 25, so you can do expansion content. Yeah, you'll yeah, go but straight I have to buy it. it. Okay, well, anyway, I hit 32, you hit 31, so we're close to the hard cap. And carry me, please. We will help we'll, you. We'll totally carry you. We... We Pending, I can clone this disc so Bronson can get back on. Uh, I'll like the thing is, I'm picking up Taken King, but I'm waiting till the end of the holiday season. Because here's the thing: we got Madden and Forza and Mario, and then we Phantom got Phantom Pain, Phantom Pain, and Until Dawn, Until Dawn, Geki Bunko, Oh yeah, uh, Uncharted, Un Disgaea and Uncharted, Disgaea, yeah, uh, Halo Five. Fucking fairy tale of that is Persona Five. Yeah, Twenty fifteen. Twenty fifteen. Hmm. Um. All right. Next question is from Jay Sway. What are your guys' thoughts on PlayStation Experience, and will you guys be going? Thoughts on it being in San Fran versus Vegas. So is they, it this year? Yep. So one. Thank God it's not in Vegas. Yes. Oh my God. I have another drive. excuse to visit the Japanese dollar store and buy all that Either. gum. Yeah, we're gonna be able to go to a Japanese dollar store and buy Pocky. That's a thing? Yeah! It is a oh thing. That's what Bronson and I did when we were in San Francisco in February for like yeah. a press event. We freaking went to Japantown, which is surprisingly small, but they have a Japanese dollar store. Everything there is a dollar. Like, you'll be surprised the stuff you can get. You can get dishes and other what? things for Isn't a dollar. Like underground, like it's like near the subway or something. Like part of it, like yeah, like part of it is underground. It's just not net, doesn't connect to the subway. Oh. Uh, but no, like, really Japanese cool. town is dope. Like, they have this dollar store there where you can get, like, 
you can get Pocky for a dollar. Like big You can get big dishes for a dollar. Like you can Walmart buy all the Pocky gum. For a dollar. Yeah. What? I'm yeah. going to spend like 20 bucks and just come home like, I won the lottery. Yeah, like, you can get dishes for a dollar? Like, yeah. like dishes, dishes? Yeah, like like plates. I'm, I'm getting a new apartment. I can use them. <laughs> like, you you can get, uh, oh my god, we saw this, like, I got, uh, I picked up uh, my friend Panda, like, a, a parasol and a, like, ceramic skull for each a dollar. Like, the ceramic Really? Skull. Yeah. Like, it was, it was That's awesome. Legit. Yeah. No. And then they have a bunch of, like, really cool anime and manga stores. Do they? Yeah, like, there's this really legit anime store that, like, they had a stuffed teddy. They had, like, like a stuffed teddy teddy. Yeah. Like Persona 4. Yeah. Hi, guys. Yeah. Teddy. Yes. Yes, they did. They had a bunch of stuffed characters. They also had, like, tons of Blu-rays and... That explains the abundance of stuffed animals in your closet. <laughs> Uh, they had, uh, they had wall scrolls. Like, I can't hang wall scrolls here because nails won't go in the wall, but... They I had love a... wall scrolls. Yeah, they have tons of them. Tons of them. The thing is that, thing that, like, when I went to Japantown for the first time, um, it was quite, it was, it was very interesting because it felt like, it, it felt kind of strange standing there because, you know, like, yeah, I'm kind of used to the Chinatown, so stepping into Japantown, all of a sudden it's right there, and... It takes a little while trying to like get used to Japanese culture, and the other half of me is like, "Oh, this feels like a lot of Asian places I've been to." It, like, obviously, Asians tend to do things similarly, kind of how Europeans and America sort of do things similarly in some ways. So at the same time, half of me is like, "Oh, this is a lot like every other Asian town," and the other half is like, "Wow, this is kind of cool." Thing that um, really feels sad yeah, about Japan towns, you kind of feel like it's kind of clinging on to life a little bit yeah i mean it, it, like we, it just feels a little you could just kind of tell everything feels a little they only have one tall building in that entire area and japan town's really tiny it used to be a lot bigger before uh i think before world war ii happened um uh, yeah real quick to answer his question though yeah we're gonna be a playstation experience we don't know which snap members like ray and i are definitely going we're staying on yeah. a first, like Tori and Stephanie are obviously going because um, they live in the city. Uh, we're probably be staying on Tori's floor. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, I call it top bunk. Top bunk. Top bunk. I'll sleep with my communist dragon. Okay. Um, He's nice to me. <laughs> fine. I'll go take my he friend. He feeds me squirrels and raccoons because you guys don't feed me. Um. Uh, but no, so I know, uh, Anthony, you're going to PSX, right? Very likely. Uh, yeah, PS. Anthony's probably going to PSX. I mean, PSX. to be honest, like, let me put it this way. San Francisco is freaking awesome. One, Vegas is a terrible city. Outside of the Vegas Strip, it's just really shady. It's basically a terrible city covered in one gigantic layer of gambling sprinkle frosting. San Francisco is actually not that bad of a city. I mean, traffic's not too bad. The air's pretty nice. Um, you you kind of have to get used to walking up and down steep hills, but that's just how you just have to deal with that. And you know, and honestly, it's just a lot easier to get there and back. I mean, freaking for for most of us, it's a four hour drive versus the seven and a half hour drive to Las Vegas. So hooray, yeah, it's closer. Like, like shorter drive, nicer city. Um, cleaner air, cleaner air, less crazy drivers, better food, like yeah, nicer people, yeah, crazier people, which is a kind of funny to watch. Um, you can walk outside without being solicited. Yeah, terrible like, things. Like I can walk down the street without the fear of being stabbed. I mean, they have such great trading cards on the Vegas Strip, though. <laughs> yes, they do. <laughs> like especially when you just. Cover your hotel room in them for the for the staff each day. You did that. Yes, we did. <laughs> we were kind of dicks. <laughs> Just oh uh, god. And then we brought them home and gave them to all our friends. Yeah, well, of course. What else do you do with those? So like, ne- like I pr- I don't want to go to CES, but if I ever go again, like I'm gonna make sure like I hoard those and come home and just like throw them at friends I know. <laughs> just toss them. Just be like, have a Suki and a Peggy. Just sneak it to your friend's house and put it at the dinner table so the parents notice. Yeah, just yeah, hide it all over my friend's house. That'd be go good. That would be a like terrible plan, and that is friendship destruction right there. 
No, just hide it in places in their house, like yeah, like just like just place cushions. it on the father's nightstand and watch what happens if you really want. No, it to place be it on the mother's person. nightstand. Pla- place it on the mother's nightstand. Yeah. <laughs> just, Honey, what's this, and why haven't I been informed? <laughs> Just okay, I'm it. not gonna push this any further because that's already very dangerous and evil as it is. Uh, that is not fun. That's, uh, that's just, just hide it in the dishwasher, in the dish, in the soap department. Yeah, the soap drawer. Like, yeah. So when they go to put it, it's like, what's this? Oh. <laughs> oh god, there's all kinds of fun places you can hide those. Oh, I like how you're just plotting this like underneath the toilet seat when they lift it up. Yeah. <laughs> yep. There you go. All right. Anyway, enough about porn trading cards. Yep. Back to Communist Dragons. Back to Communist Dragons. Oh, they better announce Gran Turismo 7 this year's PlayStation Experience, or else I'm going to be like, okay, I'm just going to buy Forza games now. Is it is it weird that I forgot that Gran Turismo 6 happened? Wait, that's... Did, did I, is, it, is it weird that I forgot the 6th Gran Turismo oh, had Yeah, the 6th Gran Turismo came out pretty five. quietly because they didn't exactly hype five. it up. Like, at E3, they just showed oh. one ch- huh. montage video, and that's, that was it. Like, like, I was like, uh, like, you reminded me of that, and I was like, oh, right, I had that game, and I sold it, because it was the same game as 5. It was the <laughs> same game as 5, with a lot of fat trimmed out and slightly better driving, yes. Yeah, I was just like, like, I was like, okay, cool, that that came out. Um, Neato, guys, Neato. Yeah, I think they could do Gran Turismo 7, I think they could do, uh, they could show off more of that new Ratchet and Clank. That was playable at E3, but they didn't show it at their press conference. Really? Yeah, like, I played That's some weird. of that. It was, it was a lot of fun. How was it? Oh, really good. It was really pretty nice. It, it was very pretty. I think it was just Ratchet and Clank. Sorry, That's you got to so think of it. Lame. That Ratchet and Clank game was very pretty. I actually did play it for, like, five, ten minutes. I am going to loan you a crack in time one day. Because you would probably like it. Like, those games have the best names out of any games ever. A crack in time is still my favorite game. And that crack in time was really good. <laughs> like, it was... Clock. Like, Blockers. Clock blockers. Clock yep. blocker. That was yeah, like those name. games are just fantastic. They're fantabulous. I, I bought the collection a couple years ago and still haven't opened it. <laughs> really? Yes. Is it up there? Yeah. It's right there. Do we have it's open? That's it. So there's a saran wrap on it. Don't open it. I'm not I'm just look at this. Oh my god. Well to be fair, my Batman. Like, the newest Batman is still sitting in saran wrap in my room. Yeah. Like, it is unopened. Um, all right, well, anyway. So, yeah, uh, most of the staff will most likely be at PlayStation Experience, and possibly all of the staff. That'd be interesting. Um, I know that's during finals for John, so that might cause problems. Bremen probably has work. Uh, Bremen might have work, but I have all of those days off except one already. Yeah, and I, it's not hard to get time off at our place. Yeah, it's like, hey, can someone cover... Please. Hey, I'll trade you these three ships for your three ships. Yeah, like, deal, deal. Yeah. And especially since we work graveyard, we have the ideal ship everyone wants. Yeah. So when we offer our hours, it's like a, a hawk swarm towards them. Yeah. So, anyway, it's really hard. Like evening ship. Evening swing is the worst. No one wants swing. You want grave or morning? Yep. Because morning, once like. No one wants three to eleven. Yeah, like three to eleven, or in my case, four to twelve is the worst one. Um, but the the best shift for ours is like mornings, because like once they're out the door into work, like it's you just have to clean and hang out. Yeah. And then I gra- get all my gaming done. Great. Was, like the thing is though, is my house. Uh, like you you gotta make sure that place is spotless. My house is always spotless because I'm a good cleaner. That's not true. Nah. Yeah. I can't be responsible I've, for stains that have been there for five I, months. I've been in your house after you cleaned. It was not. That that did not meet the standard of our supervisor, who is like, we are going to get ni- 90s on the... Uh, like, she, like, she's like, we're going to get 90s or higher on all our cleaning inspections. Uh, our last one was at 97. Really? Yeah. Wow. Like I said, when I deep clean, I deep clean. Yeah, like, Rosie... If we're not getting inspected, I don't feel like I need to scrub the floors with a sponge. So we had to uh, we had to do the baseboards with a toothbrush. That was, that was pretty great. Anthony? Oh, Anthony made a really good pun, too, about oh, that. Yeah, that. That's the didn't biggest news. even realize it. <laughs> he didn't even realize it. I like it. how he made it without trying. That's the best part. Yeah. Like I like I was Bronson, you say it. I was on a four fourteen hour shift. No, no. Let me, let me start off by saying that I didn't even understand what pun I made until literally the next morning. 
<laughs> He's like, I don't like, understand. That, that's how clueless I was. Um, that was fantastic. But I was like, like I was cleaning the baseboards and texting Anthony at work, and he and I said I was just I was like I sent him a text. Also, cleaning baseboards sucks, and he responds with, "Yeah, cleaning can be a real chore." And I'm like, Anthony, did you just, or Mr. Todd, did you just make a pun? And he's like, did I? And I didn't respond, and I screenshotted it and posted it to Facebook. I know, then I saw it, I was like, ah! <laughs> I was just like, what magic did I miss? <laughs> it was the best thing ever. I wanted to call you, but one, I was pretty sure I was about to hallucinate, like, I was falling asleep cleaning the baseboards. You thought you just dreamed that happened? Yeah, like, I was falling asleep cleaning the baseboards. Like, I nearly nodded off cleaning the baseboards with a toothbrush. Uh, In prison, that wouldn't lead to bad things. <laughs> That's how you get shanked. With your toothbrush. <laughs> Not only is it, does it kill gingivitis, it kills the It kills species. you. Um, Alright, so anyway. This has been Unscripted Access, and this has been Anthony Ta. Yes. Good evening. Intern 001, or Ray. Hey, everybody. And Bronson Fiore as your host. Hopefully Nick will be back next week. He is sick right now, so if you go on Twitter and wish him well. And please follow us on Twitter at The Gamer Access, Facebook.com, TheGamerAccess.com, and Twitch.tv slash TheGamerAccess. We have a donation page up now. Any donations are appreciated. It helps us get us out to events like PlayStation Experience. It helps pay for new equipment like capture cards. Um... You know, it helps feed the staff, and if there's anything left, maybe the intern. I get the bones. Um, you know, it really helps us. So anything uh, you can donate would be great. And if you donate, we'll be sure to give you props on on the streams or on video content slash podcasts oh, of some kind. Also, comics are back. Go read them. Uh, if you've ever played Battletoads, you know how rage-inducing it is. <laughs> So you will get to see that in this week's comic. I don't know what they're doing in next week's comic. Anyway, I'll talk to you all. Uh, we'll talk to you all sometime next week. Have a good week. Bye. Bye. We love you.